Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well as you can see, we're zipping right along with our ST70 build. This has been a fairly long build series because I'm really trying to put the details in there for new DIYers. And for you guys that, you know, build a lot of these amps yourself, I'm sure this is super boring. Hey, that's okay. Part of what I do on this channel is encourage new DIYers to build stuff like this. And I really think this is a great starting point for a DIY hobbyist to do as their first build. You end up with a really nice amp that hits way above its price point, which is kind of the point of building kits to start with. Plus I think we're making it safer by grounding the chassis and using a three wire power cord and just little stuff like that that we're doing to tweak it that I understand this thing is built to a price point and it's really trying to compete against some of these China kits with a made in USA product which is difficult and if they really put like super high-end all Mundorf caps you know went with the nicer tube sockets and speaker jacks and stuff that we're putting in this one it would probably price itself out of the market. Well, again, I wanted to kind of refresh the startup portion of the final series of videos. And so let's get busy finishing this amp up. Okay, before we dive into the board installation, I did forget to show you something that needs to be done in the power supply. This is the part that doesn't come in the kit. This is a snubber capacitor. And it's an XY safety cap that goes across the power switch. And I install these and everything I build to eliminate the loud pop that you will get out of your speakers on a lot of devices if there's no snubber cap across the switch like this. It's a cheap part. And while you're ordering it, go ahead and get one. I'll put the part number in the description below. Okay, so now we're ready to install the board. And we need to do that before we put these other sockets in and the, the RCA jacks and this stuff in the front. And the last one, we just bolted this down to the chassis. And I had some concerns about grounding the board to the chassis and then also having a ground wire to the sword ground point. And doing that sort of thing can create ground loops. And so I didn't have any problems with the restored amp, but I still think it's a good idea to not have these pads grounded to the chassis. So I got some, these little plastic washers, and I got some contact cement and glued them in place so they be a little easier to manage. And then I'm going to use the metal screws. You could use nylon screws, but I'm just that's not a great mechanical attachment. And plus it kind of looks weird in this classic amp. And so we're going to use metal screws. And then on the, the back side, and let me see if I can zoom in here and show you what this looks like. I got some little washers that look like this. They're made for those TO220 heat sinks and they have a little shoulder on them like that to make sure that the shaft of the screw doesn't touch the board. And I'll put the part number below on what I used here. But before I bolt the board down, I want to go ahead and solder this wire to the bias connection here. And then I'm going to come in with this wire that comes in the kit and I'm going to run the leads from here to pin 6 on each one of the tubes. But just solder them on the board end so I can trim them off on the other side and make sure we get a nice flush cut on all of these wires that are going through the board before we bolt the board down. So I'm going to do all that stuff off camera and then come back and show you what the prepped board looks like before we screw it down. Okay, so we got the board all prepped 
to install it now and we took some of the wire that came in the kit the solid core wire and hooked it up with a say pin six put a little red wire that's the right length to reach over to pin six for each of the tubes and then snipped it off on the other side so it's nice and flush and then we soldered the wire the red with the black stripe to the bias terminal here on the board and then we're now ready to bolt the board down so let me zoom in here and show you what we're doing here okay so we have our metal screw here we got our plastic washers and then we have that little stepped plastic washer here on this side and you want to make sure that the step part of it is down in the hole to make sure that it's insulated and then you just come in with a nut and screw the nut down and that'll hold the step part of that little washer in the hole to make sure that it's insulated so let me put the rest of these screws in and then we'll come back and solder these leads up and we'll have our board installed okay so we've got the board tightened down and you don't want to get it like crazy tight because it is tightening into plastic washers but you do want to get it tight enough where it's not going to come loose so use your own judgment on that the next thing we want to do is we need to run these wires over to the grids now i did go ahead and install these grid stopper 1k resistors and this is the grid this is pin 6 that is not used by the tube and we're using this as basically a tag point to hook up the wire that goes from the board to the grid. This is the signal wire. And you want to put the body of this resistor as close to this pin as you can. And also put it in the bottom hole so it's as close to the tube as possible. And so we've got those installed on each of the output tubes. And we're ready to hook up these little red wires and I did a little um, hook on the end of them and we're going to come in here and hook them on the tube pin or socket and pinch them down just like that so they'll stay in place when we solder them And again, these little jeweler pliers, got them off Amazon. They're just little cheap ones, but they work great. And the smaller tip ones work the best, in my opinion, because we're not putting a lot of pressure on them. And if they do get bent up, it's not real hard to fix them. You can put something like a screwdriver between the jaws like that. And then come in with another pair of pliers like this. And squeeze them together and it'll make them like new again and I've had these for years and kind of abused them for years and bent them up and straightened them back out they've never broken so get my fan going and then come in here and solder these guys up You can use the same O32 solder that we used for the board for everything, but given I do a lot of point-to-point -point wiring, I like the O50 solder better for doing this sort of thing. And there we go. We got our board installed and wired up. So the next thing we're going to do is install these 
eight pin sockets up here in the front these guys and then we're going to wire the cathodes up to them with the resistors ground that we got to hook up the ground wire for the board and then hook up the volume control but yeah guys we're getting close oh yeah and then we got to hook up the feedback wires there this yellow wire that's in the back it's going to come up here and connect up here up in the front of the amp so anyway i think it's a good place to wrap up this video so that wraps up another segment of this st70 new kit build want to add that this is not sponsored by tubes for hi-fi nor do i have any affiliation with them this kit was drop shipped to me by a viewer that commissioned me to build this for them now i don't normally do like kit builds professionally so yeah i may or may not be willing to do it in the future we'll see what that's all about but for now we're just doing this one for the channel and for some fun i want to thank all you patreon supporters and folks that make donations at my website if you find this information useful please consider joining my patreon or making a donation at my website it really helps fund future projects and keeps this channel going I also want to thank you regular viewers and especially you subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button. It's not a big deal to do. It doesn't cost you anything. And it helps the channel grow and other people see my fun content. So that's going to wrap this up. Until the next segment, have a nice day.